Gary Lamb's in the house for the first time. Gary, how are you this morning? I'm good. Hey, Larry. Larry, the problem with Brock Purdy, he's got two good ACLs, Larry. That's his problem. A couple ACLs behind this line. It's coming soon. Larry, <laughs> hey, hey, long that time, man. Trent, Trent Balky. So, that was for Trent those Balky. who missed it. You know, you know, I like Brock Purdy, Larry. I'll tell you, I like him. But the problem with him is he's working on his original ACLs. I like got her third surgery, so to speak. There you go. Larry, I don't think Brock Purdy's the problem. But, you know, the he could be if he keeps getting beat up like this. Um, the last two games have shown me that Brock is not a system quarterback. He's running around for his life. He's making plays. Um, what gives me hope is that I haven't seen any of the so-called physical limitations be an issue. And it really has been um, the 49ers of a whole not coming through in the clutch. And I have to ask you a question. Is it true that the 49ers don't practice a hurry-up, no-huddle offense? It, see, it seems unbelievable to me that that could possibly happen. I'm not there in practice. I'm hearing the rumors that a team – famous, notorious, some of the greatest comebacks in the history of the NFL. Do they not put enough practice into that? I, I, I can't believe that's true. Well, okay. First of all, any, I don't know where you heard that, but mm. nobody is there for practice. Mm. The, now, they didn't do a lot of hurry-up uh, drills that I saw this summer when we were there for practice, but like we're only there for uh, the stretching and the individual drills during the season. And so when it gets to the team drill portion, uh, we're not there. So anybody who's telling you with a total assurance that they don't practice the hurry up is speaking out of their ass because we, we're not there for it. We're, we don't know. I, my guess is they absolutely do, but they do it in limit limited doses. Um, I'll say this. I didn't, I didn't see them hurry up near enough when they fell behind by multiple scores in the Cincinnati game and they were still huddling up, that wasn't good. I mean, I was like, mm -hmm. guys, what are we doing in the huddle? I mean, you know, you're down multiple scores. Yeah, they're, the fourth quarter's just begun, but you're down multiple scores. Speed this thing up. You're going to run out of time. So I would like to see them sped up a little bit and and to, you know, look more comfortable going fast and also using tempo to um, bother their opponents. Their opponents on offense will use tempo to try to bother the 49er defense. So think about that and the stress that it puts on your defense and just turn it around and put that stress on other teams' defenses. I think Shanahan ought to consider using some tempo from time to time when he sees fit. As far as Brock, I think your comment is so spot on. Um he is not showing limitations. If anything, what's showing is that, you know, they have a limited group of weapons after their elite guys go down. And I mean, like not having Debo, you would think that they wouldn't miss a beat with all the other weapons they have, but they seem to have missed him quite a bit. And um, they're featuring CMC to such a degree that I almost feel like none of their other runners are in any kind of rhythm. So that's kind of a weird situation. They have you have one running back in rhythm, and you have receivers that that didn't look very comfortable. But you're right, Brock. You know, to me, the one thing that if I'm if the Niners fall short this year, they got to do a reinvestment into their offensive line. You know, what do you got? You got Trent Williams. Uh, uh, Banks has been better. Really, I think kind of an underrated player this year. But Brendel, I think, has shown his warts. I think Burford is having a hard time playing um, even a series or two without committing a penalty. McKivitz has had some quiet games, but struggled in week one against the Steelers, struggled mightily um, in, uh, was it two weeks ago against Minnesota uh, with a bunch of a bunch of issues. So, I mean, they clearly, in an ideal world, I think Brendel and McKivitz are backups. In an ideal world, yeah. those guys are backups and, and you have a you have a big physical dominant center, and you have a big monster physical road grading right tackle, um, and that's kind of what I see in the off season ahead. And I I was looking at the mock drafts, and I was looking at Dane Brugler's breakdown of of the draft. He's he's got a great article up on the Athletic right now 
of top prospects for the draft. And I'm starting to do my, my draft, you know, starting to look into it. There's a bunch of tackles. Um, a lot of them are going to go really high. Uh, Olu Fashanu from Penn state, Joe Alt from Notre Dame. Um, just a couple to, you know, to name a couple, but there's a bunch. Um, there's the Marius Mims from, from the university of Georgia. Uh, there's Graham Bert Barton from Duke. You know, there's a bunch of these guys. Um, Fuaga from Oregon state is a monster. Jordan Morgan from Arizona is kind of a monster. Six, six, three twenty. There's a bunch of tackles this year in the draft and the Niners have to find one and and draft one and that guy's gonna have to really play um so they this may be about the year about the offensive line and i'm not sure what to expect from this defense with wilkes coming out of the bye but i'll say this and i don't know if you agree or not but i'm interested to hear um i kind of think this jacksonville game gary is a must win it's a huge test because both teams have a bye jacksonville is a team coming up offense and defense Trevor Lawrence, who's made his mistakes, um, it, he's on, you know. So that that's that's more reason to give us hope. But I think going back to the up tempo, Larry, we don't have the offensive line to do what we want to do and run the ball. Uh, you said it before, and I agree. We have we have McCaffrey, his best skill, his biggest threat. If you're on the other side of the defense, uh, is get out there, you know, whether motioning him out, uh, just get out there and passing, right? Um, but we can't. Going back to up tempo with the line we have, we can out. We're, we're a little bit smaller, but we shouldn't be in better shape. That should help. But what the other thing that alarms me about the 49ers as a whole, their scheme doesn't seem to match their personnel. Um, and I, I think, you know, we we have a West Coast offense. Get the ball to running backs. Run up tempo. Uh, you use use your small alignment. Would on a fullback dive, you know. We're getting knocked over. So so use our speed. We have the personnel on offense to, to run an up-tempo offense. So, you know, w- w- where's all the motion? We, we should be in better shape. We're a little bit smaller. Uh, we should be able to do that. But defense is the, the, the big alarm. I think we if Kyle Shanahan wants to adjust, we have the personnel. We can do it. We have Mason if we want. We're not using Mason. If there's a, you know, the Niners don't have pile movers on the uh, at guard or center. M- maybe Spencer Burford is going to be that guy. Maybe Banks is going to be that guy, but not yet. Maybe Feliciano, maybe that's going to be a blessing in disguise. Uh, maybe that's going to be a test. Whoever's not cutting the mustard, maybe Feliciano gets in there and gives us that toughness. We do have a weapon coming back in Trent Williams, of course. That's going to help the run game, of course. I think we have the players on offense to to move the ball, um, even against the Eagles. Like Brock Purdy, he's shown he can get the ball out quick. He's moving up in the pocket. And just before I move my point in the defense, I think Brock Purdy, his next level is actually playing games Winning big games, that's how he's going to get his swag. That's how he's going to cache. That's his next level. Um, I, I don't think his physical limitations aren't – I don't think they're going to stop him. Uh, he's not going to have an arm like Trevor Lawrence, but I'm not worried about that. But I am worried about him getting beat behind the behind this line if we don't run the ball, uh, if we don't make some changes. I'm, I, I think, But I think we have the personnel to do that. We've mentioned quite a bit of them. Um, but here's I mean, the thing on defense. It's amazing <laughs> to me that J.P. Mason has only 21 carries. We should be protecting McCaffrey with our life. Like, like, okay, he 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 was a legitimate MVP candidate. He has all the things you need as a running back. What are we trying to prove? We he, he he's trying to prove something. Kyle's trying to prove something. Run him out the middle. He can do that. I believe in him, man. He's he's tough as nails. But why are we doing it when his if if you're a defensive coordinator, what are you more afraid of? McCaffrey coming out of the backfield with um if you don't have the right personnel against a line, McCaffrey on a linebacker, that's terrifying. And Brock could get it to him. That that's, that that's what scares me the most. It's like taking the ball out of Steph Curry or Kobe Bryant's hands. You know, that's, well, and if, if you, you had told me, if you had told me in, in training camp that we would get to the middle of the season, the bye week and that Brock Purdy and Elijah Mitchell would both have more carries than JP Mason. I would have thought no way, no way. And that's the case. Heck, Debo almost has more carries than J.P. Mason. I mean, get J.P. Mason on the field. The guy's averaging 5.6 a carry. He's a bull. He's an absolute bull. He reminds me of a poor man's Marshawn Lynch. And I see him in the locker room. I'm like, look at this kid. This kid's a monster. He's 5'11". He's about 230 pounds. And he's fast. To me, there are two really special backs 
that we're starting to see in the NFC. And one's getting used, and it's Jameer Gibbs. And the other is not getting used, and it's Jordan Mason. And these guys were teammates once upon a time at Georgia Tech. And it's like, Jameer Gibbs is a revelation. And he's like this monster running back now for the Lions. And, you know, um, Jameer Gibbs, I think think Jameer Gibbs is going to be one of the best backs in football the rest of this year. Jordan Mason was the thunder to Jameer Gibbs lightning at G-Tech, and they shelved him. I mean, I I realize Bobby T's got high standards. Lower our standards. Get this kid on the field. And people say, well, he's not a great pass blocker. Then put him in the game and run him. Right. I mean, let him take some bullets. If anything, let him take some bullets for McCaffrey because we need that guy fresh. He may be the best receiver we have on the team. And back to Brock Purdy. I, I love Debo as a weapon. I love Ayuk. None of them are, and including Kittle, none of them are, let's get open. For sure, you're going to get open on third down when we need you. No, no those, those are that, aren't that kind of guy. McCaffrey is because he has to play, uh, you know, either nickel back or, or a linebacker. That's another reason. Just let these kids get experience. Uh, save, save your money. This, this is the part of the, after Dallas, we should have been, you know, limiting carries, not necessarily touches, limiting carries for CMC. Kyle Shannon has to be the boss, and I'm going to go on the defensive side of the ball. If you're going to tell Steve Wilkes, you're stuck with this wide nine, all right? Fine. The players want him on the field. Who, and that's a good sign, maybe. Maybe. Who, if you don't like your boss, who wants the boss in the office if you don't like him? Kyle Shannon's hands is the leader of men, but this reminds me of the Ray Rhodes situation. Um, back in 94, where the Niners were getting beat by the, the, by the Eagles. They just, they just got Dion. And they got together. Ray Rhodes simplified it, and the Niners' defense was a weapon. Or they, they had it. They had it. They had that Norton and Woodall and Plover. Uh, those were okay. Look it. Um, they, 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 they had Dion. They had Dion, Dent, Man, Ricky Jackson, Stubblefield, Young, right? And, we, and what a what a stack back. We, we put Dana Hall on the bench. But here's the thing. What I don't okay. I love that we got a front four. I love the depth, right? Um, but here's going back to what our scheme is is not matching the personnel. Um, I think Demo Lenore and I think uh, I th- uh, Travis Ward, they're better than they're, they're playing. I think uh, it's likely that Ward is playing injured. He had to heal the whole time. But they, they're tough guys. They want to get in and, and, and bump a little bit, right? Uh, I th- and I think the front four... Uh, I think Hargrave and Armstead have have the ability in them to stop the run. So now it's on them. They're going to do it. Will Will Wilkes make that adjustment with them? You know, to play at the right time. At, you can't you can't always play zone. You can't always play you. you know, don't don't play don't play uh, all out blitz. You know, late late in the last play of the third of the halftime. Don't do that. But s- set it up. Let, let 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 your four guys up front earn earn that. Earn that pass rush. They can do it. Hargrave has been better. You know, when he starts out in Pittsburgh, he, he he's been better. Armstead should be better. I, I don't know. He he got a bear hug on uh, on Burl last week. Let him go. Like man, between oh. the lines, bro. Be a beast, bro. You're a, you're. He's the biggest, most intimidating guy. You want to see him along, along with Trent Williams. You want to see him and Trent Williams off the bus if you're a 49er fan. Those are the guys you want to see. And Trent and Debo are coming back. But oh, unleash the monster, Armstead. You could stop the run. Kinlaw, where the hell are you? Um. But okay, but the thing that they, does they got to they got to wrap. I mean, my goodness, they got to hit more and they got to wrap. The whole they, team don't make plays. We don't, we don't make the right calls at the right time. We don't make the right plays. We drop the ball and it's, and we're not making tackles. I I think this deep, with getting getting Chase Young, all of them, all our front four, they can stop the run and they got to do it first and second down and and that and hopefully we're going to marry that to our coverage. We're going to make the right calls. We're going to get on the same page like Ray Rose did with the 49ers in 94, 95. But here is my big question uh, about the personnel on defense. It's Isaiah Oliver. And the thing is, the 49ers are used to having Jimmy Ward and Kawhi Kwan Williams. They were that. It wasn't just a player. That was a force of, 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 our, of our team. Uh, Kawhi Kwan Williams, tremendous blitzer, tremendous tackler. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Ward. I mean, Jimmy Ward was a, a force. So we go from a force, not having a force. Boy, I, I, I'm really hoping maybe... Uh, uh, looter or what's the uh, Sam Womack. See the thing is, but we're we're banking on 
someone with not a lot of experience. I like what I've seen in Womack. Uh, I was honestly, I didn't want, I, I'm trying to give Oliver a chance. I didn't want him to make the team. Uh, from, from from what I'm hearing about that, uh, I didn't either. But I wanted. I, 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 just, I, I literally was calling for them to go for Deshaun Jameson. I thought Jameson outplayed him in coverage um, this summer, but they made an investment. They didn't want to look right. bad, and so they went with Oliver. And Oliver's not horrible. He's making. He's, he's getting toasted, Larry. He, he, well, he, he can't he's, play he's, coverage. He's, and he's, he's not. Coverage. He's getting toasted bad though. Like like when he gets beat, he gets beat bad, and it, it's got to bring you down mentally if you're the rest of the team. It's just like you, you can't – how can how can you use him? Like that that's the question. How can, And he's trying to make plays. He's made a pick. He, he get, I, I don't know what can to do with that guy. Me? I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not – I'm not as a – I, I know, don't I mean, that, that's, who knows? He was a, he was a be like a Marquez, Colorado. Yeah. He was a corner at Colorado. They played him outside. Then they moved him inside, and he's, he was better. Um, his best numbers were last year in the slot. But, man, I mean – it might be time to try to look as a kind of a speed element and play him a little bit at safety um, because that's just like, I don't know. I mean, how does this defense get faster? Where does the speed come from? They got to do something. They got to help out with Greenlaw and Warner. Uh, got to keep them clean. In, they're they're not the going to make it. Right. They're not going to make it. That's exactly true. And and um, the other thing is I realize Jalen Graham's a little raw. But get yeah. him, make him active on game day, and get him on the field and coach him up. If Johnny Holland is this great, great linebacker coach, then coach him up. I mean, this get guy, him in early. Jalen get, get Graham him, get can it, yeah. hit and run and be a factor. I think. It, I mean, I'll say this: Shanahan said, "My team looks tired. My team looks slow." All right, the bye week's going to help the tired, but the, only the injection of speed is going to help the slow. And so there's going to have to be, and speed is oftentimes youth. So does that mean Jair Brown? Does that mean Womack? Does that mean Luter? Does that mean Danny Gray? Does that, you know, who, where is, does that mean Jalen Graham? Um, you know, he, there's got to be, you've got to have some guys who move better to have speed. And and then if I'm Wilkes, I think I'm, I'm, I'm playing much tighter coverage and challenging teams. Enough, enough of this bend, but don't break. Um, right now, you're neutralizing your own greatest strength, which is your pass rush, by playing a relatively soft coverage. You're allowing a quarterback like Burrow, who likes to get the ball out fast, but the last two weeks, you've been carved up like a Thanksgiving turkey because your coverage is soft and your D, your D line's not getting home. Well, if a quarterback wants to get rid of the ball in 2.4 seconds, it's going to be very difficult for Bosa and company to get get sacks. So, what does that tell you? That tells you you got to play a much more aggressive coverage, whether it's man or zone. You got to get up on the line of scrimmage and hug up on these receivers and dare them to go over the top. Um, otherwise, it's going to be every quality veteran quarterback that they face is going to is going to attack them underneath all day. The other thing that I think is absolutely vital, we have to see it starting in this Jacksonville game. They got to start playing complementary football. You've got to you've got to think of your defense on offense. So run the ball, control the clock, dominate the time of possession. Shanahan loves to score quickly and it's great and when it and when it works it looks great. But be a little bit more patient. Take what the defense gives you. Keep methodically driving the ball down the field. If you possess the ball, that's all the that's minutes that the offense is not possessing the ball. Why do I say this? Because I think one of the real factors for this Niner defense is they've got to bring more energy and more effort, but they can only do that if you limit their snaps. If you don't limit their snaps, then it's going to be a hard, you got to play complementary ball here. So um, I think that's a major key. You got to keep in this Jacksonville game. You, Jacksonville's got a ton of speed. Trevor Lawrence has got a big arm. You've got to make sure that your defense can match up to them. And you do a good job by helping them out by controlling, dominating the time of possession, running the hell out of the football, first downs, first downs, first downs, first downs. And then when your defense does get on the field, hopefully they're getting on the field with a lead and with a ton of energy. 
and then you can probably get the best out of of what you got. Um, if you, I mean, I'll give you I'll give you one more example before we jump here. Um, I talked to Chris Kosarek in July. I said, Chris, are you going to play your number one D line more because they're so dominant? He said, No, I'm not. He goes, I, If I play Bosa and the number one 65 to 70 snaps a game, they're not going to be healthy come playoff time. I said, Okay. I looked at the snap count last week. Bosa had 68 snaps, the most he's had all year. He's had four games all year with 60 plus snaps. Three of them have been the last three weeks. They needed Chase Young in the worst way. They need to keep utilizing their depth, Gregory, Drake, all their backups. Um, they've got to use these guys, but they've got to make sure that they play complimentary ball to keep their defense on the sideline as much as possible and keep their engines, you know, the engines can rev high when the gas tank's full. But if they're if they're gonna if you're gonna make Bosa play 70 snaps, he's not gonna have a full gas tank in the fourth quarter. So you got to do to the to other teams what they've done to you, which is ball control them and unleash fury when your defense is on the field. I never asked you this, um, uh, Gary. Where are you calling from? Where are you? I see the Warriors. I see the Giants. Are you a Bay yeah. Area guy? Bay Area, San Bruno, California, near the airport, brother. There you go. Are you, know, you born and raised here? Where'd you go to school? What? What? I went. To, I went to Berlin Game High. Uh, born and go. raised in the Bay, man, all over the place. Uh, but on the peninsula. To your point, Larry. Yeah. Um, energy on defense. Draymond Green talked about last night with the Warriors. Different sport. But he said, you know, we were missing last night against the Thunder. We got that win. We needed that energy. We needed our rookies to play, right? And that's what the Niners need to do. If you're going to play your rookies, play them early in the game while it's not, you know, while it's not in the balance. Get 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 them in there. Get get Jay Brown. Get uh, get Womack. Get our, get our young linebackers, Winters, or whoever. Whoever, whoever, whoever want to get in there. Get one of them in there, right? That's where the energy is going to come from on defense. This, but I... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this as a question. Do you trust uh, Wilkes and, and Kyle to get him in? And if we're going to run the ball, and I agree, we're going to need J.P. Mason. We're Okay, if it, was up to, if it was up to Christian McCaffrey, he'd run it 30 times a game and get 20 targets. I'm not worried about that, but that's not sustainable. Neither is Nick Bosa, uh, you know, 65 snaps, right? Uh, he, he wore out last year. Do you trust Kyle Shanahan to, to, to get the job done? Do you trust him to get, let his players play? You know, and where the hell is Danny Gray? Like, I, I, okay, the, the, the guys, you know, I, I'm not saying in crunch time, you know, bring in Ronnie Bell, but uh, they're, they're telling me there's not a play for these guys. Or there's not, there's not a gadget play for uh, even, uh, even McLeod. It's like, we're, 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 hey, in the script, script some of these guys. You run a script. You give me some up tempo in the script. Give me, give me, you're right, ball control. Was now he's like the best player on the team early. They were running ball control. They, they were, they were have, playing controversial football early. I, I think they can do it, but now it's the 17 game season. We're in the second half. Do you trust Kyle Shanahan to get the other guys in? Do you trust any? That's if there, I'm never a Kyle Shanahan fire that guy. I love the guy, but if there's been a weakness, he hasn't let his players play. He's under you some, over you some others. And and can you ask him what do you do in the two minute offense? What what are you doing? So I I want I want to know because it just bothers me that a team historically renowned for some of the greatest comebacks in NFL history that cashed the first great Super Bowl, Montana the Taylor, you know, Jeff Garcia making comebacks. I just haven't seen it. And, you know, I think some teams got to win a certain way. We got to win with this West Coast offense. We got to get a comeback. I hope, you know, and finally, you know what? We shouldn't have to... Brock Purdy should be riding should be riding the coattails behind a defense and a good running game. That's what he should be doing. That's why I didn't want to get rid of Trey Lance, a guy who never threw a pick, you know, do what zero picks in a college season. And that's why I was kind of worried about Donald. But we, we got to get let let Brock be a rookie. You know, the, the range should be on him. Um, you know, he had to do gotta, too much in this Bengal game. Right, right. But I, I, I'm like, OK, like I said. I'm hopeful for this guy, but if we if we keep doing what we're doing, if we don't play complimentary football, if we don't if we if we don't start running our other running backs, it's not going to matter. We can lose this kid. We can lose him because a, a lot of quarterbacks, a lot a lot of higher rated quarterbacks have gotten beat up. 
I like that Brock is tough. He's 220. Steve Young was, uh, you know, I don't, he probably was more than that, but his his, uh, his listed weight was 205. He's a strong kid. He's taken a beating, and he's back. He busted his elbow, his weak elbow arm. He threw a pass in the NFC Championship game with a busted elbow. He's in with busted ribs and, and, a, and a concussed head. The guy's tough. Every question he's answering to me, and, and, and what we has is that processor. It doesn't make sense that all of a sudden the fourth quarter is going to be gone. I want to know, what are we doing? Uh, what are we doing? What, what, what's our plan? He, uh, Kyle, will probably, Kyle will probably give you a hard time, but the 49er fans, the faithful want to know. No, no, I will ask some of those questions because, you know, and, and it's all about context and I got to have the mm-hmm. right context to ask right. these questions. But um, I, 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 I'll, I will say this, um, you know, um, it's it's awesome to be able to sit there and, and and get it, get two, three questions in for him every week. And and um, and I try to ask the kinds of questions that I find interesting and hopefully you that advance the conversation a little bit. But you're absolutely right. I think some of those questions absolutely need to be asked of Kyle and. And and let's show us an awful lot uh, this next game. It's like I it, it, I don't know if it's do or die or must win because it's you know there's a lot of football left. But man, it's getting there. It's getting there because you got Philly coming, you got the Ravens coming, you got two games with Seattle coming. Um, you know it's gonna they better they better get it dialed up. They better get it dialed up. And the season they lose the next two games and they're cooked. They lose to Jacksonville and and Tampa and they're cooked. Would you agree? Um, no, but I mean, it could be there because, because we could be cooked. I don't, the Niners have never, that would make them five and five and the, with Philly and, and two games with Seattle on the horizon. I think one five thing and about five the, could be very hard to come back from. One thing about the 49ers, they haven't quit yet on Kyle Shanahan. No, they don't, they don't um, quit. They're not going to quit. Uh, but but what, what, what makes it, what makes it, um, like the alarming to me is I, they, I, they don't have it together. Right? They're, 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 they're they're not on the same page with Steve Wilkes. Will they make the personnel changes? Will they make the scheme changes? Uh, if they say say they it's you can easily go to Jacksonville and lose. That's a good team. You know, it doesn't mean they're bad. Very good. Yeah, and so, very so, so, exclusive. And and you can go to Seattle and lose. You you could lose to some of these good teams. Um, if they show signs that they're willing to change, get JP Mason in the game in, uh, on changes in defensive per- personnel. May you know it may take time to gel, but if if they show signs of improving, like toward the direction we want to see, if they start showing signs of a, a two minute offense, they could. I don't want them to lose. I don't want them to go on the road. I don't want no wild card games. But if they start showing signs of improving, if they eventually get it together, you know, and, and start playing complimentary football, people start uh, are in the roles that that they should be in. Then we could we can, you know, we might have to take some lumps. And but if we start playing better, put guys in the right spot, then then we're the best team in the league again. Gary, I got to jump. I got to okay, no, jump. Thank you. Good stuff, man. And and uh, don't be a stranger, man. This is the first time. Is this the first time you've jumped in or second? The first time I jumped in, I I uh, I sent you some call. I I, I want to I want to get Damon and Grant in the same show at the same time. Oh my God, I don't know if the, I don't know if the the room's big enough. Uh, appreciate you, brother. And <laughs> I like you, the Warrior God, jersey. I like the uh, the Giant jersey. Um, check me out Monday and Tuesday on the 95.7 The Game with Willard in the afternoon. Will do. See you, brother. Later, man.